Welcome back. On Monday, a bill to create a three-digit suicide hotline took a major step forward. It passed the House overwhelmingly on a vote of 397 to 1. Now it just needs one more vote in the Senate. Taryn Hyatt is the Area Director of Nevada and Utah for the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. She's here to talk more about that and other available resources. Taryn, so glad to have you with us. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, such a big issue here in the state of Utah where we are really hit hard, but let's focus on this bill that passed the House on Monday. Yeah. Uh, how big of a difference could that make if someone anywhere in the country could call an easy to remember yeah. three-digit hotline? This would be huge. I mean, if you think about the fact, all of us know in an emergency what number to call. Yeah, um, you can teach a child 911 mm -hmm. and they know what to do in an emergency. But we're telling people who are in one of the darkest moments of their entire life to try to remember a 10 digit number, your brain isn't even functioning, let alone having access to something like that. So to have three digits to remember and access to that kind of a service is gonna be huge. And it's interesting you bring up 911 because that's exactly what this is. This is a mental health crisis or emergency. Yeah, and that's what this bill is really going to help us to identify. You know, we also need to make sure that the system is in place to be able to answer that many calls because we know we'll see an increase once people have an easier number to mm -hmm. remember. Okay, it needs one more uh, vote in the Senate. It appears that that will happen, but things don't move so fast in Washington. What are you hopeful to see I'm over the next little bit? I'm hopeful to see this just move fast and swift. We need this yesterday, and, and we're hopeful that we'll see this go without any nays this time, but, but hopefully they'll move through really quickly and, and we can start the process on getting this three-digit number implemented. All right, uh, in the meantime, let's talk about the situation here in the state of Utah. We're really hit hard. Yeah. Give us an idea of the impact suicide has here in the Beehive State. You know, suicide has a devastating impact here in the United or in Utah. We lost, you know, over 650 people last year to suicide alone, and 50 of those were young people, and one life is too many. You know, that's a suicide every about 12 to 14 hours here in our state, so we need to do better. And, and with services like this and giving people resources and, and a place where they could reach out and connect to help, you know, we hope to see those numbers decrease dramatically. Mm -hmm. Someone in that uh, time of despair, what's your message to them? And, you know, maybe they're thinking, I want to reach out, but I just don't know if I can. Yeah. I think that's the, the thing that our lies, you know, our brain lies to us and tells us is that we can't and that nobody would care. Um, my message to you is clear, you know, please, if you're struggling or thinking about suicide, reach out, tell somebody and tell as many people as you need to um, until someone takes you serious because we can help to get you the support that you need to get you through whatever the crisis is, um, but we need you here to be able to do that. How should parents respond if a child comes to them and, and talks to them? about, you know, I've had suicidal thoughts because the initial response may not be the one that's the best response. Yeah. I think as a parent, that's a scary thing to hear. And my recommendation would be that you thank your child. You thank them for being honest with you. You thank them for having the courage to tell you and reassure them that together you will find the support and help they need to work through whatever it is mm -hmm. that has them thinking about suicide. Let's talk about some of the resources available because we've really made strides in the state of providing that help and making sure it's there yeah. when people do reach out. Yeah, so one of the greatest resources is that Safe UT app that we mm -hmm. created. This is an app folks can download to their phone where they can chat live with a crisis counselor 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They can report tips if they're worried about somebody. Um, but this is also an app that they could chat to and say, hey, this is what I'm seeing. I'm not sure if it's suicide. I don't know if I should be concerned and get support for themselves. The National Suicide Prevention Lifeline is a huge resource. And right now that's the best one we have to provide 24 hour a day, seven day a week, you know, mm -hmm. 365 days of a year, you yeah. know, care. So calling that 800 number. And we have that on the screen right there, 1-800-273-TALK or 2255. And in the state of Utah, a law passed just this year to make sure that any time a call goes to that number or any other mm -hmm. uh, crisis line in the state of Utah, it's answered, as you said, 24-7, yeah. 365. Yeah. Uh, how can we connect with, with you and your organization and what you guys are doing? Yeah, so you can visit our website at AFSP.org. Uh, just go to backslash Utah and that will take you right to our mm -hmm. local chapter. Um, but we've got a lot of great events coming up, ways to get connected and, and join the movement to, to save lives and bring hope to those who've been affected by suicide. And you guys help take that message to Capitol Hill as yes, well. Yes, we do. We have an advocacy day and we'd love you to sign up to become an advocate. You can do mm -hmm. that on our website. This way you're kept informed about what's happening legislatively both at a national and a local level yeah. and we show up every year at the Capitol and, and talk with our representatives. Because the personal stories really can be yes. impactful and powerful and make a huge difference. Yeah. All right, your uh, 
Website one more time. So AFSP.org. Okay, appreciate your time. Thanks yeah. so much for being here. Unfortunately, it's a conversation we have to have, but a very important one. Yes. All right, thanks so much. Coming up, what do you think about the BLM moving to Utah? The governor says there's a good possibility. Our panel will weigh in on that right after the break.